Hello friends, this is your buddy Jim. Welcome to Sawlogs Plastic Hubs. Welcome to my humble shop today and uh, I'm proud to introduce we got another project video. This is, I think this is one of the most challenging little odd things that I've done on video. Well, what I have is a set of Cleveland Ford heads. Early 70s that was on a 351 or 400 or something of that nature that was a hydraulic camshaft. Uh, the heads were to be converted to a solid lifter type roller rocker arm deal for a friend of mine who races Fords. And he asked me could I cut the pedestals down. He's got another machinist friend of his. His automotive is going to do the work. So we've got a very interesting setup here on how we've got this head in the mill, how we've cut it. I've shown little pictures all through it. A uh, couple little things I had to learn along the way. But is this something different? And also there's a little fixture that I've sent along with them so they could drill the holes and re-thread them because the bolt holes for the roller rock arms are larger than the bolts that Ford used at the time. This <coughs> has been a real challenge for me. Mainly because this is a very rare item and it's very difficult to get a hold of. And I feel honored that my good friend trusted me to do this work for him. So I did consult with some local people that I know that does engine building. Uh, done a little consulting, got an idea of what we needed to do. And one of the challenges you'll notice is how the head's sitting on the mill because the rocker studs are parallel to the valves and they're all of it stuff's canted. So that took some interesting setup work. So with that being said, we're going to get over here in the mill. We're going to start moving. We're going to get this stuff set up. We're going to start cutting it for you today. And at the end, there's going to be a little fixture I'm making. It'll go along with this video. So, no further ado, gather everybody around the widescreen. Hey, let's get over to the mill and see what we can get done. Good morning, good afternoon. This is your buddy Jim. Um, we got a project. <laughs> yeah, we really got something up on the mill today. Uh, home of sketchy setups. What I got today is I've been tasked with helping a friend rework some heads for a Cleveland engine. So what I'm going to do today is I've already done a lot of the setup work. Well, the trick with these things, they're like a big block Chevrolet and all this pedestals and stuff at different angles. So with the way an automotive machine shop would do this, they'd have a fixture to drill these out and they would use like a something like a countersink type tool and cut these down. Well we don't have that and the guy that's going to do the valve job don't have that machine. So I was asked could I cut them down. So what I've done is I've mounted these heads on the mill. We're going to take light cuts because the heads are fairly massive with completely four heads. And we're going to cut each one of these pedestals down to about 350 thousandths above these bolt holes. So that way they can drill and tap them out and put uh, larger studs and all the stuff they need for racing involved. So I've got them marked. So right now we're going to do the exhaust side. Then when I do the intake, I'll have to flip the head over the other way. I've got a pair of them to do. I have one over on the bench that's been done. And I'll show it to you. So that's the one on my bench that's been machined. Maybe I can get a little closer here. You can see the details. So this is what we're going to do. And this is the typical things you run into when you're dealing with forward stuff. So. We're going to get started. I said I was going to try the insert mill. The amount that's got to come off of this is there's no clearance is involved in there. So we're going to have to back up and try something else. So I went and just started regular old left and mill. And uh, 
put it in there because I've got room that I can clear everything. I'm going to take that tap out, by the way. That was just my reference. Yeah. I'm just taking a little live 100,000 cut. These heads are so massive, they don't even shimmed up the way I've got them shimmed up. There's no chatter involved. So, basically, it's just a matter. This is easy. I'm going to move out a little bit. This is easy enough to do this. This is easy enough to take a bit longer. I'll get these ports. These are the exhaust side. Then i got to flip it over to the intake side. Okay, I'm just going to take another whack at it. So I'm going to take about 200 and we'll come back and we'll measure it again. And I'm just taking my time feeding this and watching everything. Make sure nothing moves. I had a little bit of movement a minute ago. Depending on this head sort of stake in there. Stay in place. Put a little bit of oil out there. I'm gonna check it after this 200,000 to see if this could be safe. Um, the putter back's a lot more difficult. Okay, this is the last pass. I'll double check it. Should get it. It put me right where it's supposed to be. So you don't have a lot of room in there. Automotive machine shops have cut this a lot differently. They got specialized equipment. And uh, this particular deal here the guy that's going to do the valve work and stuff. All right, let me get set up and measure and I'll bring you back. Okay, so now if you'll notice, if you get up here closer and see good, you notice I've got all, uh, all these are exhaust ports. And the intakes actually slope the other way. So what I'm going to do is go get the other, the other head for the other side. And we'll put them on the same way and basically cut all the exhaust ports because we got the same setup. This is head number two. And what I'm doing, since the orientation of all the valves are on one side, this has to be the exhaust, is the same one side of the engine to the other. Once I found the angles, this is easier to do this setup this way or I'm doing it. So these are all being cut to 350 thousandths, which is the same height from here to this bolt boss. It's the only thing I really have to measure to. So, and that's consistent across the other head. But once I finish this, 
uh, when I bring you back, we're going to do the same process. We'll set the head up flip the other way because these actually angle a different direction. These have an angle this way, and my guess is I'm going to move everything over to the other side, and I'm going to be pretty damn close. I mean, within a, uh, two tenths of a degree or something, that's close enough because basically they're going to put a guide plate here. I mean, if it's not, you know, within 20 thousandths or so, hey, you ain't going to matter. I mean, this, they're going to reel this out and all. Uh, so here we go. This is going to give you an idea of how close everything is. Once you get these things down, right here is your valve stem stuff. So that's how close all that is. And that's how careful we got to be. One of the things I'm doing is measuring and taking my time. I could probably take bigger cuts, but I'm trying to work this down slowly because there's just no room for error on this deal. I hate to say it. These things are very difficult to get your hands on to begin with. This is a set of two barrel heads here, by the way, and there's going to be a lot more work that the customer or my friend has got to do this. This is, a, and I'm going to sound like I'm being real flippant. This is a charity job, by the way. It's, and I'm going to say, this is a good friend of mine that we go way, way back, and I'm just trying to help him out because this is a very expensive proposition. And his machinist doesn't have the capability of cutting these properly. So he could take this to you know his machinist that does a lot of his other work. I, I do work for him too, so but he's just not set up to do this kind of work. Okay, my hunch was correct. What it is that the angle these pedestals correspond with the valves. Now this is the intake side that's facing. The head's faced the same way on the, on the milling table. So now we'll go down these and cut these down just like the other. So the trick is to get this parallel to the bolt, you have to put it in an angle. So this is what kind of angle it takes to parallel that to the up. And what it is, all these, these, it's not that the valves are straight up, the valves are also at angles. So everything's got to be parallel to the valve and the stud. So they will drill these things out to the larger bolts. I'm not going to touch them because, again, that's a lot more alignment. You get a little bit off on that. It'd almost be easier with all these complex angles as the hand drill. So I'm going to let them have that. There his machinists can handle that. He just don't have a way to cut these off. He don't have the quick way machine. And then I'm having to cobble together this mill set up. So let's get cracking, get these damn gum things cut out. Well, there is the completed second head. That's what it's going to look like when I'm done with it. I haven't taken it off the mill. That's it. I mean, basically, and uh, you see how it's got an angle, these, and that's how you figured, and that's how I got these true. So, that's another job right out the door. First, the heads, the two that I did, the one it was sent to me. The head part of this job is complete. Now, I'm going to do one other thing that I wasn't asked to do, just to make their life easier. So, what we're going to do is we're going to drill, make a little metal sleeve set on top of that so you can drill these out and keep everything in line, make it easier to line the drill up. So I'm going to make that right quick. So we're going to do the lathe. I'm just going to do a simple job. I just go out and grab a piece of cold roll, a piece of steel, some sort I got. I'm just going to, again, you know, this is some well. I was born in space route last, wasn't I? All right. So here we go. I'm just going to trim the face up. Run down the other D right quick. Clean it up. When I go back, it's just a solid pretty darn perfect. 
stove. Let's grab a piece of scrap up for this because it's just handy. And uh, face it off. Had a piece up there, but it had too big a hole in it. I'm going to knock that out right quick. Yeah. I'll, kind of, I'll turn the OD and get the hole in it. I'll bring you back and I'll cut it off. Okay, now I'm just going to go ahead and park this off right quick. And like I said, it's nothing fancy. It's just basically the, the tap drill size they need. They can just lay this right on top of the places that I've machined. Take a hand drill and run right down in there and drill it. And that way it'll be in line. It'll be a lot easier to line up that way than to try to line it up on my mill. I told them as much when I done it. Because this way you're going to make sure it's parallel to the part. Throw the tap guard in with it. In fact, I'm going to put this back in the lathe and I'm going to hit it with the face it off a little bit too while I'm at it. So that's kind of going to be it. I'll get this done, put all this stuff here together. And another call, text the boy, tell him he can come get it whenever he wants it. I'm ready for it. So right now I'm just trying to. I didn't even put me a pop there at all this catch and this fall right down here in the lake. One of the things I found again about part is if you part this is a uncoated bang good insert. I'm telling you this is the cheapest of the cheap that you can get your hands on. That's a shore's blade, but it's just cheap old bang good too. One thing I found that really works is it is it's too tempting and you go too fast on RPM. And I just throw mine down in this slow gear like I'm using high speed steel. I've never had no luck with high speed steel made, so. You know, I made this hole to try to get one to work. My other one's, a friend of mine's got it that I made. I've been using this one. I modified how that experiment a while back. So. Alright. Okay, folks, I hope you enjoyed this. This has been, a, like I said in the opening, this has been a challenge for me. It stretched how I had to think outside the box a little bit. Um, I think it turned out really well because I've got them within like high two tenths of the degree or something like that. Fairly true. Um, so, you know, with, I think that done as well as the way the originals was done. So I hope you enjoyed this video today. Uh, if you like, subscribe, comment. If you got any ways to do it better, throw them in. I mean, they're always appreciated. Uh, I think that I've done the best I can with what I had to work with. Hopefully everybody be satisfied when we get done. So with all that being said, stop by, uh, ring the bell, Subscribe if you're so inclined. Or if you just want to stop by and watch me make a monkey's tail of myself um, every once in a while, pull right up into the channel and do that. Um, I just got done cleaning up the shop. It's in a flipping mess. So we just got cleaned up, ready to rock and roll. So guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. We'll see you on that very next video. You guys have a great day.